pieces in this show are definitely one of a kind individual pieces. Like there isn't a duplicate of it like it in the world. I've never made a duplicate of any of these pieces. These are all one of a kind. Well, first off, I focus on main two main styles of blowing glass, which would be the Italian Venetian way of blowing glass, which is very symmetrical and geometrical, and every everything is very complex and ornate and very delicate and extremely fancy. This is more unique and more, it takes a lot more of my focus and skill set to do. Like, I mean, just the labyrinth, you know, and just the center of that alone took a while and just to make the one part of this piece it's a really long time. And each one of those pieces is made up of individual pieces of glass, which are all stuck together to make the center part of just that bowl. And then we gotta put it together with these other two parts and then actually make something with it. This is the same thing, you know, this is made with a bowl on the inside here to get that pattern, that diamond pattern. And then I use copper to actually make it all blue and bubbly there. Then we get the light lip wrap and the white foot on the bottom of them. Give it a nice compliment with the bowl. That's all done with the copper to make it all that blue bubbly stuff. There's more done with the cane. Each one of those stripes is an individual piece of glass all pushed together. And then we make the center of that bowl. This is one of the ones I gave Kathy maybe about a year ago called Blue Ribbon. And I just take those same lines that we saw in the other bowls and I just kind of scramble them up a little bit more instead of keeping them all in like a tight geometric pattern. There's all sorts of different ways. This one's raticello, means fishnet in Italian. It's actually each one of those lines is individual like all the others, but I twist them all one way, just like I would in this way. You can see it's only twisted one direction. And then I would do it again and twist it the other way. And so I can stick them together and make it like this crisscross pattern. And if we look real close in between each one of those little diamonds is an actual bubble that gets trapped there if I do it correctly. It's probably one of the oldest and hardest techniques in blown glass like known today by far. This one's kind of a, like a combination of both of like my production line work and like some of my bigger fancier things. So I use the Encomo technique to make each one of the bands, but this pattern, this color pattern comes from one of my production lines called uh, Treasure Series. And I like it because of the black with the bluey green kind of gives it this underwater hidden treasure kind of feel. And every time you look at it, you kind of, you kind of discover some different kind of beauty about it. And then the Swedish style way of blowing glass would use the optical quality and the thickness of the glass. They really focus on the clarity of the material. And uh, I've combined both of those techniques into some of the newest work, like behind me in Indian baskets. And then have continued to focus on my Venetian style techniques and patterns, which is about what these pieces mean to me, as well as like showing everybody all the new skills and techniques that I've learned throughout the 12 years and this show is showing like my most recent body of work. Techniques and traditions. Are these like seminal patterns or something? Uh, like my mom collects Indian baskets and um, she's like one fourth Native American and I'm one eighth and a lot of these patterns were Native American patterns that were on her baskets. And then just put my own spin on it. I like bright colors, so that says me for sure. Nice. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother, she had like a lot of baskets and they got passed down to my mom. She oh, would get them all over the house. So this is where you got the yep. and so inspiration? I just was growing up with them and I was like, wow, those people really took the time and care just to even put like, I mean, they just could have made it a basket, but they took right. the time to put all those patterns and details and tell their story right. about it. And that's what these are about. Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia kind of area. I mean, it was cool. All these patterns were on the baskets and I just took them and they just meant a lot to my mom. She told me so many stories about them and where she got them and where she thinks her grandfather got them. You know, if I get it too hot, 
then the, it won't trap the little bubbles in between each of the diamonds. If I don't get it hot enough, the bubbles won't separate into like each one. Each one of those lines, I have to get like a wad of glass and then stretch that across like a room. I'm the one that's in control of it, but I mean, I rely on my assistants and my team a great deal. Like, I mean, it's just glass blowing is a team sport. Hi, how are you? Good, good to see you. I don't know, you from, I don't know five minutes. Thank you so you much. Come oh, I know, we've come a long way I for like sure. The spring fever. Oh, yeah, you like that one downstairs? It's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's one of the newest ones. I, it's called a rondelle, and it means like plate. How do you get this? Um, I have to keep turning it. From the inside out? Right? Pretty much, yep. Yeah. So it looked like a big ball. How do you get all the colors? How do I get all the colors? Well, the glass actually starts out clear, and to make it a color, you have to add like certain metals and minerals. Metals. So yeah, and then gold makes pink, silver can make purple. So you make stuff. Um, mm hmm oil. Yep, like and that's how we can get all these different colors. White is usually from zinc. It's a mixture, probably. Probably, probably. Yeah. Rare. If you see red glass, it's rare. It definitely, I mean, I got it and I can use it and I can make things in red for sure. Pink is another one that's like that. It has gold in it and uh, that's not as bad, but it's still expensive. I love glass. This is the first time I've ever made something that has like a lid on it. They really are. Getting there. Kathy was like, I want to be the first. And like, I'm so, I was like, of course, Kathy, yeah, you got it. Biggest, biggest fan right there. there you go. Found me in a coffee shop. Leave it to Kathy. I know, she would, she would. She finds some great talent. There's so much and so as I glassed it too, it was kind of like pushing it onto the glass more and so it like really hugged it. I eventually want to try and even take like some of the cane work and like try and put that underneath of like the opaque color and see that pattern. Oh, oh wow. Here we go. I will, I will keep going to your show. Woo! Uh, Thanks. were the ones that actually took glass and made it crystal clear. It was, and they had like sand from Egypt and they brought it across the Mediterranean, took it and refined it and broke down its chemical formula and were able to really refine the glass. And now lots of Italians have come here and worked with us, which is great. You know, and what Chihuly did by going over there. It's our generation now, and the one right above me, like a little bit older, gave the way for Americans. I'm excited about that, for sure. Uh, I do make Small production items for sure, and some medium sized ones to help pay my bills with my company, but uh, this, it's my, my form of art. And to show you my progression, to show you my technique, techniques and traditions. <laughs>